apply into construction, mainly um, dealing with uh, robotics, uh, developing of um, actuators, developing of uh, end effectors, integrating this into the robots, and then developing the tool paths to, to, to uh, fabricate uh, things with them. And, and other things. <laughs> um, also, I have a, a small studio in New Bruno that is uh, focusing more in um, consulting for uh, digital fabrication and and uh, mainly uh, uh, large scale 3D printing. So, uh, well, like Balin said, uh, um, I'm from Mexico. I had my company there. We made 3D printers. I have a. Uh, I have. I went to Barcelona to IAC uh, for a master's in robotics and advanced construction, and then uh, when I came back uh, to Mexico, I started working uh, with robots and moved to the U.S. where I'm currently. <laughs> um, well, uh, first the videos weren't working, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of this. So toolpathing. Um, Mainly we use toolpathing to communicate or design the way that uh, machines are gonna move to, to do to move, right? Just just that. And then the way they move, uh, we can then apply different uh, techniques. For example, uh, drawing is probably the simplest one. You produce a, a G code that then you can uh, program a machine to, to move. And there's many algorithms to do really cool things from maps, uh, portraits, et cetera. Also toolpathing um, usually is used for CNC milling and, um, and, and, and cutting, like uh, selectively uh, taking away material. Um, In this case, uh, we can see that uh, we, in, in the case of the robots, we have a uh, multiple axis to which we can align to, to, to change the direction that we're cutting. Um, most of the times we're using three axis. We're gonna focus on this session on three axis only. Um, and also of course, uh, 3D printing, right? And we can 3D print with clay, with plastic, with concrete and, and, and other things. Um, but something to consider is that these are the building blocks to uh, create more complex, um, more, more complex toolpathing. In this case, uh, robotic printing, where we can um, again create a, a line or or a path and then uh, simulate it or um, follow it for the robots or machines to do something. This was probably not the best video to show that. <laughs> but there's a little path in there. I don't know if you guys can see it because the resolution is not great. And then the robot follows and all the um, all the access uh, calculate the angles that they need to produce. So usually uh, the, the process is we have a 3D or 2D design. And in this case, in 3D, we're talking about 3D models. In 2D, we're usually talking about uh, lines, paths, um, vectors then we take it to a, a cam or a slicer program that converts it to a g code or a robot language for example and then this goes into the machine that uh, follows the the program that we're making today we're going to focus a little bit into this area the, the slicing and g code so we're going to be directly uh, designing the tool paths for uh, the machine also, uh, in in this workshop, we're gonna be looking at a very um, at the basics of this, how to produce this with Python. We're gonna learn the the some very basic stuff in in Python, like the syntax and how to create uh, do some basic things. Use this to our advantage to make uh, parametric toolpaths. And then, uh, if you want to like go ahead and and keep experimenting on this, we're having a workshop on November eighth to twelfth with uh, Carl Singlein, uh, uh, he has a, a YouTube channel where he uh, teaches a lot about uh, toolpathing for KUKA robots. So we're having a workshop with him here where we'll be dealing more with uh, toolpathing for um, ro robots with KUKA PRC. So everyone's uh, invited to uh, register. Um, you, at the end, I can send a link for this if you guys are interested. And uh, that's it, thank you. <laughs> This is my contact. I also send it later, but uh, let's get started because we have a short session today. <laughs> so everyone should have got a link. 
Can you find it? Um, Everyone should have got a link for this GitHub repo, repo that I created in the in the last couple of days. Uh, this is a, a like a general uh, outline of what we'll be doing. Uh, but first, we need to download uh, Blender. Blender is a free open source program. So to download it, you can go to this link, Blender 3.3. You click here, and and you can get Blender, free forever. Um, also, we'll be doing this from inside Blender. Uh, we need the, the screen is sharing, right? Yeah, the screen yeah. is sharing. Yeah. So also we're gonna be using Sberchuk and this is just so we can have a, a simpler Python interface to interact with Blender. And also the nodes that it provides are super useful for uh, visualization and, and then uh, even animating and other things. So we're gonna be installing this from inside Blender. I'll show it real quick. And finally, uh, G-Code Exporter. This one you have to download. This is an add-on from Alessandro Somparelli. And this what, what does is that it allows us to select literally any line or path inside Blender and then turn it into, into G-Code. In this case, G-Code is specifically for uh, 3D printers. All right. So, I'm gonna proceed. So once you open Blender, the first thing uh, we wanna do is we, we're gonna activate um, the virtual add -on. So we go to preferences. And then here on preferences, you're gonna go to add-ons. And from add-ons, uh, you can search here, Svertchuk. And then you activate this first node here on top. This is the only one we're gonna be using today. There's some extras on it. So just activate this one. It's, if for some reason it's not appearing here, what you have to do is go to the link for this bird chuck, uh that I sent, is a GitHub. Then you can uh, download the zip file here. So this is a Sverchuk GitHub code, download the zip. And then you, you can open that file from here. You go to install, you find that, um, you find that, that zip and it will install it. And once you install it, it should now be here. So once we're there, I think everything's gonna be recording. So I'm gonna keep moving ahead. Once we're there, we're gonna set up our, 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 our Blender uh, interface. So the first thing I like to do for uh, working with this specific uh, workflow is uh, down here. Uh, well, first of all, these are viewports in Blender. So we have the 3D viewport. Usually you start with this timeline viewport. We're not gonna be using it today. So we're gonna come in here and then if you click on the top left corner, we can change what viewport this is. So in this case, I'm gonna select this Virtual nodes and start a new tree. Now also something I like to do, this is a little bit tricky sometimes, but it's been getting better. If you go to the, in your 3D view, if you go to the top right corner and you position your cursor here in the corner, you see that uh, icon, the cross icon. And then I drag out of here, I should be able to create a new window. And if you create windows by accidents, uh, by accident, because it can happen, you can click back here and then you kind of drag it inside and you see that, um, uh, you, you see that, that arrow and then it closes it back. So we click on the corner, we create a new window, and you can also use that same uh, way to uh, close windows. All right, so now this new 3D viewport that we have here, it's independent from the other one. Uh, now the, the objects will uh, show the same movement that we do with a different view. Uh, but what we, what we wanna get this is, is we're gonna get a text editor. So we're gonna go into the top, left corner and change this to a text editor. Here we're gonna create a new a new text. And in this case, we can name it my script.py. And usually I will write everything uh, with you. So it's um so so it, I think it's better to learn to type things, but in this case, because we have a very short session and a lot of content, I'm going to um 
I'm going to I'm going to be copy pasting from the GitHub repo. So if we go back to the repo that I shared with you, then you can go to files and they are numbered. So in case you're wondering, you have a startup file here that you can open if you're having issues with the windows and everything. You can download this startup file. Uh, you just click download. And then we can open that uh, file here, which should give us a very similar uh, a very similar viewport. This is just in case uh, you were having issues. Where did I download it? Anyways, uh, I'm gonna leave it like this, but you should be able to download it from there. Um, going back to the GitHub. So in the GitHub files, you can uh, click on the multiple files that I have here. And we're gonna start with this simple one. So I'm gonna copy this file and then I'm gonna paste it on my uh, text editor in Blender. So I'll explain you real quick what, what each thing means. Um, first, we have this uh, text in between three, uh, parent three um, quotes. <laughs> so we have three quotes and then next line, you can have comments there for whatever you want to put. You can put a title for the file if you want, whatever you need. And then we're going to define our inputs and outputs. If I'm correct, this is called a directive in, in this. Uh, in I'll, I'll explain you what that is. It's in the Zvertruck node uh, script node light. But the directive, what it's, it helps us do is uh, define the node that we're making. Because what we're programming here, what we're defining here, it's a node for Zvertruck. So let me show you. In Zvertruck, here in uh, my Zvertruck window, I'm going to click Shift A. And then I can, I'm going to create right now a generator, a line. So this is producing a line and giving us out vertices and edges. So what I'm going to do is shift A again, get a bis for visualizing, and I'm going to get a viewer draw so I can see what this is generating. I'm going to delete my default cube. So you select it. Um, I select with right click, but I think Blender now is left click too. So you should be able to select it and delete it with X. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my birds to birds, edges, to edges. And as you can see, it's previewing here a yellow line. I'm going to increase the thickness just in case you cannot see it. So with this viewer, we can increase our um, size. Also, let me uh, increase the size of the code here. Um, but what we're doing right now, or the way that Zvertruck works, is that um, the information goes from node to node, but we can actually read it by getting Shift A text, viewer text. And then in this one, we can plug in any node connected and view, and it works as a text uh, out, output to just for viewing what information it has. And as you can see, the, the vertices list here, uh, as we're uh, data structures is with Python list. So I'll explain that in a minute. But what we get is one object that has two uh, different objects inside that list, right? So we have a, a large list in this case uh, that contains two vertices. The first verti uh, vertex is in 0, 0, 0, 0, which is this one. And the second um, vertex is going to be on 10, 0, 0, which is here. It's uh, offset it 10 on x. So if I keep increasing here, you'll see that there's many ways to make lines with this uh, node. Like this is by size, so the size is constant that we change here, and then we can subdivide it here, or we have number in which case we say how much is each step in this case one, and then just increase the number so that the uh, size is going to be variable. Anyways, if I view, it will um, show me the content of this of this list of the vertices list, but also if you plug in the edges you can see that they just work by connecting this. So the way this works is you have a list, right? That contains 
the x, y, c values for x, y, c values for each one of our ver vertices. So we have a list of the vertices and then each one has a index. So in programming, usually you start counting by zero. So this will be index zero, index one, index two. So the way that we define our edges is by telling now I have a list of edges. In this case, this is my first edge, my second edge. These are the edges right here. Sorry, my first edge, my number one edge, my number two edge, my number three edge. And, uh, and the way we define is number zero or the first edge is going to be made with vertex zero and vertex one. So vertex zero comma vertex one. Then um, we, we define our second um, edge, which would be one comma two. I don't know if this makes sense, but what we're doing is a list of vertices and then connecting them with a list of edges. This is just a quick uh, preview of how the data works. Um, hopefully you understood it, but if not, it's not completely necessary. It's just interesting to, to know it and it helps a lot when you're designing these things. Now, uh, as you can see, Zvertshock has many, many nodes, some super useful uh, nodes that I, I encourage everyone to look. For example, in Generator, you can generate different uh, objects. Um, and each one, I can take a new one. Um, let's try uh, Susan. Susan is the monkey of Blender. So if I connect the vertices and the edges, it should give me a, a a monkey uh, mesh. And then we can even create the polygons here to preview it. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna delete this, underline one. And what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna start actually making our first node, which is gonna be this random vertex node. So, so all right, let's just start. So I'm gonna add a new vertex, shift A. I'm gonna go to script, scripted node light. And this scripted node light is expecting a text file. So we can have multiple, like when you're copy pasting from uh, GitHub, you can create new files for each one. And you do that by clicking on this uh, icon with the two sheets on the top. So here you select which uh, text you're reading from. In this case, it's my script. I rename it here, if you remember, and then I plug it. So what we did here in our, um, in our, oh, I forgot the name again. Uh, we're in this initial block of text, uh, we, we created an input, uh, input socket and an output socket. To define sockets is very simple. We can, we can start by in, for example, and then you name that uh, socket. So in, I don't know, uh, position, and then you tell it what, which type it is. There's many types uh, that it can, it can be. Usually we're gonna stick to, to B or S. I'll explain later what those are, but in position B. And as soon as I refresh with control enter, it creates a new input back input socket. And same thing for the, um, same, same thing for the output, um, for the output um, no, uh, sockets, we create out, meaning an out, it's, it's gonna be an out socket. We name it however we want, and we just say which type it is. In this case, it's a B, which stands for vector, right? So this is gonna, this is gonna say that it's expecting a vector type of data from here. So now, uh, again, I'm gonna control enter because I deleted that again. Uh, a little bit of Python, this first line, it's to import. Uh, we're importing a library from uh, Python that it's already installed. You don't have to worry about it. Called random, and it's, this is just a library that gives us some functions to to call random numbers. Then I want to show you how to print things. So we're using a print uh, a print command in this or function. But in this case, uh, if you want to write something into the console, you type print, and then inside parentheses. Inside, um, 
inside um ah i forgot the name for this <laughs> inside this you type the the word or the the you type the string that you want in uh in parentheses so it could be a variable so we'll see what a variable is for example right now i'm printing hello world so i'm gonna go into window toggle system console if you are on um if you are on what's the name in linux or mac i think it automatically opens so you you get this window open in windows you need to open it in window but whatever we print is gonna is gonna show here so in this case, I'm printing two things in my script, the print hello world and the print vertex. So if we look at our, our um, terminal here, we're seeing the hello world and our vertex that we are drawing there. Um, and what this is doing is uh, after we print, for example, a variable could be like, I'm gonna call this my variable my bar equals, and then I can type, hello, digital features. Again, it has to have the, um, the um, quotes here. And then I can change this and replace, replace this to my bar, uh, control enter. And then now it's printing that new text that I put. Now this is a, just for debugging, we're gonna be using it. But um, just so you know, now I can just change this text. And if I check my console again, we are changing the text here. Hopefully you can see it, but the idea here is uh, using variables, we can change the values that we're getting. Now uh, we printed it. And now what I'm doing is I'm defining a position for X, Y, and C. In this case, I'm using the library random. So I'm using this import random. So I'm saying from this library that I imported random dot rand int, which is, um, which is a function that it comes with the library. Give me a number between minus 10 and plus 10. So in, inside parentheses, we're giving it two parameters, minus 10 and 10. So now if I plug in my vertex, oh, my computer throws him. So if your computer throws like mine sometimes like here with Blender with the terminal open, just click enter for some reason that happens very often to me. Uh, so I just clicked enter on the terminal. I think it like hangs it for some reason. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna come here to my new node that I created plugging the, the vertex to the vertex. And as you can see, I get a vertex floating in space, right? Because what I'm doing here is first I'm grabbing my, my I'm creating my vertex here. I'm, I'm assembling it by creating a new variable that has the X, Y, Z values in parentheses. And then I'm storing it in a list on itself because these values here that I'm connecting uh, to one another, are expected to be nested. And sometimes there's a trick if you don't wanna store them here in a list, here in a list, we can do it on the on the nodes. But uh, sometimes that could be the issue if, if your um, socket is not reading correctly, it could be that your uh, nestedness level is wrong. We'll talk about that in a minute too. But anyways, um, every time I refresh the script with control enter, it gives me a new position that's in between those values, right? I'm just clicking Shift Enter and it creates a new vector. Also, you can click here, uh, update node. So every time I click update, update node, it uh, speeds a new, a new vertex. So now I'm gonna copy the next file now that we have that one from my GitHub. In this case, I'm gonna to go to files, number two. Uh, Bablin, if, if you think I'm going too fast or, or something or skipping things, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's going good, yeah? Okay. So I copied the script number two. I'm gonna paste it here. And here, as you can see, I changed a couple things in my um, directive. That's the name I was looking for before. And one is that, it's the same thing in 
now I'm, I'm calling number n. I'm just using the first letter n. And then d equals three. So d equals three is gonna give me a default value for that uh, node of three. Uh, in this case, I'm using a, a integer. So I think it, it does stick with the integer there. And then n equals two, this is a nestedness level. This has nothing to do with this n, right? This could be whatever other number I wish and has nothing to do with this. This second n here equals two, what it's telling me is that it's gonna look into that input and access one level inside to read the information. And that's just the way that that structure uh, is set up to, to, to read it correctly. Because if not, every time I connect something from the Svertrack nodes into my scripted node, it's gonna be it's gonna be expecting you to nest it in the script, and it's easier just to do it from the directive. Um, anyways, same thing, importing random. In this case, uh, oh, I don't need this anymore it's because when I created this output first, uh, Python creates a list for us automatically. So this is redundant, but it, I left it here to explain that every time you put an output you're creating a list in your script. So if I delete this, and then I am gonna type print uh, verbs, and let me refresh this script. But if I go to my terminal again, you'll see that when I'm calling my, my print verbs, it is it is here. It's actually printing this empty list that I have here, right? So this one is commented out. So that's why it's not printing the birds value after I run my script. But you can see that it's printing an empty list. So it it is it is created with the director. Anyways, the first thing that we're gonna do is uh we're gonna create a, a for loop. And a for loop in, in Blender, what it's gonna do for us. Is, is gonna look into a list. In this case, you remember we have these brackets and uh, inside that list is gonna kind of count automatically how many items it's in there. And for each item is gonna perform an action. So in this case, I have N, which is just a, a, a value of three. So it's for I in range N. So that means that for I in zero, one, two, three, Zero one, sorry, zero one two. So that's three items. Create a different uh, um, vertex and then append those vertex. So here it's creating each one, and then once it, we can run it. So it's let me. Sorry, I'm getting that's the next file. So let's just go with this one. <laughs> Import random. So for I in range n, so it's 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 counting the items in my list. Um, I'm gonna run this once, right? Set a value to x, set a value to y, set a value to c. To store that those values on 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 a new uh, vertex, and then append that vertex to the list. And now this is gonna run three times. So it's creating three random uh, vertices. So if I increase the number here, it should be, oh, it hung again. Remember what I explained that I have this bug where I have to click enter to unhang it. But now we have an error or oh, we have a negative list. <laughs> but again, you can create like this, uh, as many vertices as you need. <laughs> so, Hopefully that's clear. Uh, I'm gonna run to the next uh, script. Simple line. So here we're gonna define our first line. Again, we have our directive. We are uh, we have a number. In this case, we're creating a line. So it's gonna be the number of elements in that line, the number of vertices in that line. And then we have a step in X, a step in Y, and a step in C. So that, what that means is that each, it's gonna take the previous element and offset it on X, Y, or C, and this is gonna be parametric. So we can uh, define how much we wanna offset in all three of them and, uh, and move it. 
Also, we are uh, kind of spinning out our vertices and our edges. Um, I'm going to refresh this. And what's happening here? All right. So here we have the, the issue of the nestedness. Uh, and I left it in purpose because I wanted to show you what happens. Uh, in this case, type error int object is not iterable, iterable. So that's because the data that we're passing into here uh, needs to be nested one time. So there's two ways. One is to 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 say uh, birds equals, and then I use um, brackets and say birds. So what I'm doing is storing my list inside a list. So now if I refresh it, it creates my vertices there, right? With the offset of step one, step two, step on X, step on Y, and step on C, right? So I can leave it on one. By the way, uh, this is a very un unuseful script that I made here because I think we have a node in virtual for this, but it's just for explaining. <laughs> how it's made. Anyways, um, so again, now for the edges, I have to do the same thing. So I grab my edges list and store it in a, I nest it into a list and then it replaces that variable for itself. And now if I plug in edges to edges, I'm connecting them together. So let's see what the code is doing. Same thing that we did before. We're creating a um, we're creating a vertex. In this case, we're just displacing it i times step x. So I'm kind of adding a a, a component that multiplies it each time we each time we iterate. So the first time we we run this loop, i equals to zero. So i times step zero is going to be zero, right? So it starts at zero. But then i times when we run it the second time, i times i is equal to, so i times uh, step x, and step x is one, then it's gonna be uh, one, two, three, and every time this runs, it's gonna be offsetting it a little bit. And this happens for every one of, of them um, vertices. Same thing, we append this to, uh, we, we append this, we, up, we append this to our, uh, to our vector, our vector equals these, first append our vector, and it creates a line. But now here's a new component. And what this is doing is looking into my list that I created previously. Oh no, for i in range n minus one. Okay, no, we don't do that yet. We do it in, in a later code. I do this differently. But here, uh, what we're doing is running the same, the, the we're running the same, uh, for i in range, but then here I'm, I'm subtracting one. So it's gonna uh, subtract one less time. Why are we doing this? Because, oops. if I connect this and this, if we count the vertices and the edges for each three vertices, we have two edges. So we don't run this three times because if we run it three times, it's gonna be expecting to connect the last uh, vertex to the first uh, vertex, right? So every time we increase it, we extend our line and then it um, it creates a new edge for us by running this. So it's appending B1 and B2, but in this case, we're actually looking at the because we start at zero, we're just looking at the simple count, but there's a way to actually look at the items on the other list, but we'll do that later. Anyways, we'll go to uh, code number three. This yeah. is all uh, like the- Louis, can you, can you also check the chat uh, a minute, just to yes. see if anyone has, has any questions, if they have any errors, we can take a pause and just check. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm checking. Uh, Kishaba, I'm, I'm, I'm Keshav, Keshav, the, yeah. Keshav, He's yeah. around. I mean, he can also ask uh, the question. Keshav, would you like to ask your doubt? I'm getting this error. Key error sockets. Let me let me look what it is, and I'll 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 tell you because I, I I don't remember this error. Let me open the screen.
So can, can you try, uh, what would happen if you delete the first, uh, the first line, the the where, where you have your name, uh, Kishaba. I'm I'm checking your your your. So you cannot load it, right? So I'm not familiar with this one. So maybe if you delete the key, the your name, or also what happens if you retype the code? Because sometimes I don't know if it could be an issue of the um the character types. It could be because uh, I don't know. That that could be also an error when when you copy code and it has a character that your uh, system doesn't recognize. It could be something like that because because this looks correct for what I can see, but there is an error somewhere. Import random. Um, maybe if you delete uh, your name first and then just try to run it and see what happens, and let me know if it works, please. Does anyone else has a question? Okay, I think it looks good. We can move forward. All right, Kishala. Let, let me know and I'll try to help. Um, all right, I'm gonna grab the next code. So I'm gonna go to if statements. Oh, this is cool. So it also works as a tiny bit, a tiny um, Python tutorial, I think. <laughs> oh, we're getting there, or remember the, the type error? I'll show you the other way to do it on this one. But let's first analyze our code, and then let's see if we're getting what we expect. So in this case, uh, again, we have the two input sockets, the, the number of vertices we want to make, and the steps. And we are uh, outputting our vertices on our edges. Um, so for i in range n, again, we're counting uh, the number. We're going to run this this amount of times, x, y. But then for c, we, we have something interesting. If i uh, modulo 2 equals modulo 2, then c equals 0, else c equals 1. So what this does, modulo, it's a function that uh, looks at the uh, division and the remainder. So if this one, how it works, um, there's probably people here that know better how to explain it, but uh, it looks at the division and based on the re remainder, if there's a remainder or not, it's gonna give you a, a, a if there's a remainder that it's a common, divisible number of that, then it will it will run the first part of, of this code. And if not, it's gonna run the second part, which is one. And because we're using two, that means that all the, uh, all the, uh, um, not pairs, <laughs> I, I forgot the name, all the not pair numbers <laughs> uh, are gonna be zero and all the pair numbers are gonna be one on C. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna create a, a, a line with this kind of triangular um, um, texture. <laughs> and then again, we're storing our point X, Y, C, and then appending that point to our list of uh, vertices. Then same thing, we're connecting them with this little snippet that just connects them together. And now we're having the same error. So that means we need to store our, um, we need to store our list inside a list. We need to nest it. But there's a way to do it in Svertchuk. So I'm going to here, go here on my uh, tab. If if you click uh, N in, in here, you can open and close this side tab. So Svertchuk. Then I'm going to go to three UI options and then uh, socket menu. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to grab it. And then I'm going to uh, wrap it to what? Wrap it. There you go. <laughs> so there it is. So you can see that by using this modular function, uh, it will um, do this. Now, if we type three here, now it's gonna do two and then one, right? So so we're gonna change kind of the pattern, in which um, it's gonna do one and then two, one two, and then every time we change this number five, then that means that one in every five is gonna be offset. And well, you can. Uh, 
can understand what happens there. So this is really interesting later on um, when we're texturing things on the GCO, we you can use something like this to to put that logic on how how often do you want to um, add these little uh, offset and loops. <laughs> um, so if statements and uh, the way Python works is that if uh, evaluates this is true, then run this. Else, if it's false, is this. Now you can have uh, multiple. If this is true, the, there's a uh, another one of these um, uh, Python language. Uh, um, I don't know what the name for that, but you can say if else if, which is else if, run this. So you can have multiple. So if i divisible in five. So let's try one just so I can show it. You know, I think it's that. It's else if, else if, and then we run a different uh, number. For example, we can say uh, this one equals one. Then we, sorry, I forgot here to add a, uh, what were we evaluating here? So I'm gonna L if one divisible two. Um, I'm gonna just change this and then this one. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what this is gonna do. So now you can see that we can have uh, every. So if I is uh, modulo five, then run at zero. So that's for most of them. Else divisible by, by two, it's gonna be three. So so it's, it's these ones here, the taller ones. And then else for the rest is gonna be one. So you can start texturing this way, right? You can add as many of these as you want, and then you're gonna be modulating these different uh, crevices that we're designing here. Um, next up, we still have a lot of stuff to check and we're almost halfway there. Where did my, oh, here it is. So random vertices, simple line, if statements, math function. We're starting to get to the fun stuff. So here I want to explain a couple of things. And as you can see, I've been trying to explain some uh, Python specific, uh, Python language specific syntax. So hopefully that's also useful if you never uh, learn a programming language, this is being useful. So same thing, we have our directive. Uh, we have three uh, inputs. In this case, I, ha I have a scale factor and uh, but uh, scale factor and uh, our output of vertices and edges. So this time I'm importing a different library called math. Uh, now I did something a little bit different. Uh, what I did here is I defined uh, uh, my spiral um, toolpath. And then same thing, I'm running my for loop for creating my vertices and my for loop for creating my edges. But if you look at the for loop for creating my vertices, uh, I'm using this uh, math.cos i times steps times two. So what this does, what these two do is they're gonna create a spiral. Let's, let's look into that one. And right now it's wrapped. But the cool thing now is I think that we can actually call it from different uh, places. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So, because it's a function. So what I did this is here is define spiral parentheses equals this. So we could actually uh, call multiple spirals or yeah, that's usually what how functions are used is to reuse the code. So we can actually um, call these multiple times and make many spirals, but that will only make sense if we have a C value that allows us to change it, no? So, You can see what this is doing. Scale C. The scale C only does this like uh, sine wave on the C axis for them. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to change this one. 
so because I want you to see what the function does. So I'm going to see it say uh, spiral. I'm going to put a, a parameter in the spiral function. In this case, I'm going to call it C. Uh, no, let's not call it C. Um, scale C. <laughs> SC. So I'm, this is a variable that I'm creating just for this function, SC. And then on my C value, I'm going to say SC. So depending on where I write this spiral, for example, in this case, I'm going to type zero. But then I'm going to create a second spiral in, I'm going to say, three. So let's see what that's going to do for us. Hopefully it works. And I think it might do something weird. So it did create it. Um, it did create it both of the spirals, but now it's doing something uh, weird because um, with the for loop here, because we, we're not uh, considering that we're calling multiple of them. So it's just trying to add them on the same vertex. But I think the problem is that because we wrap it, it's looking at the first element. So we will need to account for that, but the vertices are getting made. So we will need to find a way to, to, to call it and store multiple lists for the multiple spirals in this case. There's actually a way to do that. We do it later with a different uh, shape. But I just wanted to explain in this case that we could call the spiral uh, function many times. And then we, we, we can start. Uh, we can start uh, making it more parametric even, or yeah, because you can reuse these functions and, and call them and start doing interesting things. Now I'm gonna make a little pause on the code because there's a couple of things I forgot to explain at the beginning and are very important. So um, I'm gonna go to my GitHub. So here, uh, as you can remember, uh, we talked about the requirements. We also, I here also put a couple extra things because uh, they're important. The Blender documentation. Here you can find Blender specific documentation. Oh, this is the spreadsheet documentation. Okay, so I put the spreadsheet documentation on the Blender docs and to change that. But you can find the Blender documentation if you have uh, questions about Blender. Then we have the Blender scripted node. In this case, uh, it explains how we're using this node in Svertshock, what is the, uh, what, what is the, um, remember it was the directive. <laughs> so in this case, it explains all the, all, all the specifics on how this is used. It's really well documented. So feel free to look into this. Then also uh, I'm putting this reference from a book. It's called uh, Morphing by Dr. Joseph Coma. And the reason I put it here is because he explains a lot of, 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 of the ways, you know, all we're doing here is uh, putting a, a math function to, to create geometry. So he does a, an amazing uh, job on explaining how to create very complex uh, geometries. I highly suggest you take a look into this book. And he explains the transformations behind them. So we are used to use scaling or or, uh, or translating and, and all these things when we're 3D modeling, well, he explains the math behind it. So, and more things, you know, like there's like pinching and, and other really interesting ways to, to modify our geometry. Uh, question for YouTube. I can run the script node. I need more info to be able to help. Maybe they need, um, they're having some kind of error. And um, it must be Blender 3.3. No, uh, I started using this in a very old version, but I'm just asking for, for it to be Blender 3.3 just because it's uh, that way everyone can have the same. Uh, if we run into an error, it's kind of easier to, to help. Um, all right, then I have this book. Uh, well, I don't have this book. This, uh, this guy, um, Alberto Maria Gianchino, it's free. Uh, you can donate. It's amazing. I love it because it explains the data structure in Svertschuk, and it's amazing. I really love it, and I really like the fact that he allows you to get it for free. Um, then uh, we have this book also, it's amazing, called Advanced 3D Printing with Grasshopper. It's like the Bible of doing G-code with uh, Grasshopper. Uh, it was very useful when developing this, this um, tutorial, and also the tutorial that I have done before. 
Also, uh, there's many ways to do G-code. I wanted to, to show you a couple ones. There's, there's this uh, program called Full Control G-code, which is similar to what we're trying to do here with, uh, with Python, but uh, he does, this, does it in Excel, uh, Microsoft Excel. And then uh, he's actually working to, to release it on Python, a, a Python library to do it. But the stuff that he creates here, it's amazing. Like um, he, uses his, he uses like these functions to make like uh, grids and, and other like very interesting things. But a uh, very, very, very interesting tool. I suggest you take a look into it if you're interested in this. Then uh, we have the uh, Nozzle Boss tool. This is another add-on in Blender. And I think this one does something super cool. And is in vertex in Blender we have these called vertex colors, so you can add color to the vertex themselves. So you are adding three more values, and then based on that you can map that to the extrusion rate or to other uh, variables in order to 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 create this effect on 3D printing. So it's a really interesting add-on and very easy to use. There's a good tutorial here I think in his in his uh, GitHub. Then uh, we have Silkworm. It's a um, it's a grasshopper add-on, and this one is really interesting because it's it's a very easy way to do like what we're doing with Alessandro Samparelli's uh, um, G code export. He does on 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 they do here with with Silkworm, and it has also a bunch of tools to simplify the workflow. So if you're a, a grasshopper uh, more into that, the, this is great. I've used it and it's very advisable. Now, uh, also I put the Python, um, the Python, uh, Python reference here from W3 schools. And the reason I put here is because I'm not a, a um, I'm not an expert on Python. I use Python a lot, but most likely if I say something that makes no sense, uh, you can come here and verify the information I'm giving you. <laughs> um, you know what G code is for training. Yeah, well, okay. We'll explain a little bit of what G code is. Uh, we're gonna do a simple parser in a bit. So then we'll look into the into what is G code. And G code is just the language that most 3D printers use to move. So we'll look into that in a minute. Anyways, let's keep going. So as you can see here, like I explained one of the books I, I advise is uh, Joseph Coma. We're using a translation here which is just adding. And in this case, we're just adding because this value will be zero, but because we're using this SC, uh, it's kind of uh, moving moving up. Oh no, actually we're mapping it to the, to the function uh, parameter itself. Anyways, hopefully the functions are clear. <laughs> I don't know if there's more questions. Uh, Louis Penn hopefully figure out why he can run the script now. Send me a message in, in YouTube, and I can try to also help later on. Um, okay, we're we have one hour, so we're good on time. Then, um, oh, this one is my favorite. <laughs> uh, well, it's my favorite because I really like what you can do with this. So. Um, from the math function, we used the spiral. We used the, uh, we learned how to create a function. Now we're gonna grab this one, the strange attractor. It's a really cool thing to do. And it's gonna help us do a little bit of starting on how to visualize these and simulate these things. So I'm gonna extend this a little bit. I'm gonna explain it real fast. Um, I'll add some reference to strange attractors in the, in the links on GitHub later. Uh, because I don't think I put any, but strange attractors are this very cool math. I don't even know how to call it. Well, formulas. Uh, <laughs> let me find them. So strange attractors are these kind of um, interesting shapes <laughs> that come from chaotic uh, orbits. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> so it's a very interesting area of study because there's like the butterfly effect attractor, which is the Lorentz attractor that we're gonna be doing today. And uh, it's just, mm, 
I can't remember how it is, but it's it's chaotic. So that means it's we have a formula, so we can kind of predict how it could look like, but it introduces a lot of chaos because every little variable creates such a weird offset of things. And there's videos in YouTube that explain that way better and more in depth than me. So let's just do what we're here for, which is viewing this. I'm gonna ungrab this because I think that's the issue I'm having. I'm gonna let's just zoom is not running my strange project. So it is wrapped and it's not letting me see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear this now. Clear and reload and connect and connect again. And it's still stuck to the last one even though we change it. So when this happens, you can go to window, toggle system console, and most likely I have an error in my code that we're gonna have to debug. Ooh, okay, so it says syntax error, unmatched this, unmatched uh, closing loop. Print error bird. Oh, here in the end. So maybe I didn't copy it, hopefully it's there. Is that it? Oh, it's hanging, so let me click enter. Print birds, print birds. No, this is okay. This is not right. There you go. I should have read that before. So, this is our strange attractor. Uh, again, we're here using some variables. These are specific to the strange attractor. Um, if you look into it, you'll see that each strange attractor can have different parameters of this. Then uh, this is the actual formula for creating the strange attractor that we can even find in um, Wikipedia. Let me find it. So in system, I think it's this. Yeah, found it. So uh, what we're doing is this formula. So as you can see, we have some variables, delta and other variables, but I forgot their names right now. But all I did is replace those formulas here, and then you can create these cool looking shapes. Now, this looks kind of boring, so it's a good time to show you a couple of visualization strategies. In this case, I'm gonna um, deactivate this. Uh, let's see the first one, Shift A visualization and I, I really like this one because it gives really cool effects the metable one and the metable one all it expects is the vertices so i connect the oh i'm doing something wrong oh the origin sorry i connect my vertices to the origins and it starts giving me this cool looking so when they are close it starts mixing them together and as they get far, they they get like little bits. So this is a, a cool way to do it. Not very useful for toolpathing, <laughs> but interesting to, to 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 see. It helps you see what's too close, what's not too close, because you can actually change the radi ra radio and stiffness of the metaballs. It does get a little slow, so just be careful with this one. Because uh, we have a thousand points in, in this case. Let me change the light type. a sunlight and I'm gonna have just a little plane there so we have some shades so white so it doesn't look that good I'm gonna change the material so here I'm changing just the material I created a plane on the bottom to create a plane on blender just shift a mesh plane then you select the plane and you scale it up and that's how you create objects in Blender. Um, new material, and I just wanna change this color so we can see it. But I think my problem here is that, I need to put the material here, but still the light is too strong. So my, my light, my sunlight that I made here is super strong. So let's change that to, and there we go. We have a cool looking strange attractor. So in case you were wondering how I did the, the one of the pictures in Instagram, it's this way. But instead of using the meta balls, you can delete it. 
sometimes one that is very useful is going to be the best uh, polyline. Polyline is a good one because it allows us to plug in these the birds there. And it creates a polyline for us. And then we can change the radius of that polyline. And something very cool is that we can actually create a different um, a different bevel. So in this case, I'm going to use a curve here. I haven't tried this. It might not work. <laughs> but I'm going to create a, is there something like a little star or something? Rounded rectangle? OK, rounded re rectangle works. So then I'm gonna grab my curve. I'm connected to the bevel here, and it didn't work. I haven't tried this before. I thought it could work, but what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna create a, a shift A here, shift A, then here, then um, I'm just gonna do a simple circle. It's here. Hopefully you can see it. Let me isolate it. I'm gonna isolate the circle. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subdivide these two values. Why is it not subdivided? Oh, here it is, subdivide. Sorry about that. And I'm going to just slide some of this in. And this is just to give it some, um, again, this might be not very relevant for our toolpath, but it's it's helpful to create cool looking stuff. So all I'm doing is a curve that is going to get extruder on the, on the, on the path or on our toolpath. So I created this uh, cube here. So now I can say here, call it from there. Oops. And it's working this time, I think. So let's go back to. There you go. So here. So. As you can see, that little curve that I made down there, it's now the uh, profile that I'm using for that. And then that's how you create something super fast in this case for uh, previewing your toolpaths and making them look cool. You can also animate this with the, uh, this is easy because we can bring in the uh, time frame. Uh, Frame info. Yeah. So current frame, I'm going to connect it here. And I haven't done this in a while, so hopefully it doesn't do something that I don't expect. So I'm going to open a new timeline here just really fast to show you that. But this is a way that you can start animating your. Uh... Oh. Okay. So you can actually animate these paths. So when you're printing, that's cool because you can actually animate your, um, you can animate the, the, the toolpad and how it's printing. Or if you're running a simulation and you're moving the rest of the elements that you have there, you can actually um, animate all these. Anyways, um, Let's get back in subject. <laughs> Just a cool thing I wanted to show you. I'm gonna check any questions until now. Uh, there's many more uh, strange attractors you can check. The code for the viewer drone node is not there in the GitHub repo. Can you add it in the chat? The code for the viewer node? Um, what, what, what do you mean? What do you mean with the code code for the uh, viewer draw node? Uh, so the viewer the viewer draw node here, it's it's I am not coding it. I, I wish that's probably very that's. Yeah. Uh, Kishan, you know. do you want to do you want to address your question? Yeah, I'm. Or, or maybe uh, just elaborate. Are you looking for some particular code or? Yeah. So I I think he's asking where do I get the code to create this. 
but no, the code is 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 not needed here because if you go to shift A and this, you can see them. And the one that I'm using for this is the polyline and for the for the viewer draw, I go to this and viewer draw. Here it is. So I'm not I'm not actually coding those. Now you can actually see how they are coded, and that's that's something really cool. If you're if you want to see that, you can go viewer here, and I think Virtual here has somewhere that you can edit the code. If I'm not wrong, here you go. Edit source externally or internally. So I click internally, and this is the code. But I highly advise against modifying it. <laughs> But you could potentially uh, modify it to change the way virtual and blender works. Anyways, uh, more questions to this point? All right, I'll keep going. So I think it's a good time to do the oh, let me keep creating. So those are the two uh, visualization uh, tools that I use the most. Uh, we're gonna be using some more, but in this case, just those. Let me jump into the next code. No, actually, before we jump to the next code, I wanna I, I wanna talk a little bit about the G code. So now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my GitHub. Here, I mean, my B. And now this time what I'm gonna do is uh, I have a file here called gcode.blend. So if you can download it, please uh, download it. And let's open that file. Uh, I think I think that file already is gonna have this gcode.py uh, somewhere, G simple parser.py. I think it's already saved in there. So I'm gonna open that real fast, uh, open recent. Um, okay. Oh, it's actually in my document. We have... All right, here it is. So we're going to talk about Jico. <laughs> Now, as you remember, we were looking a lot uh, right now into, into making the lines and everything, but now how do we turn that into, into the actual um, machine language, right? So there's many options and I wanted to show you all, all the main options that I use for you to, 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 to just choose which one works for you. So the first one, if you love notes, which sometimes I do, but sometimes I hate. Um, I like visual programming, but sometimes it's too much. And this is a great example. So in this case, I am uh, taking just a line. This could be anything. And then this line, I'm gonna convert to G-code. And here I'm showing multiple ways to do it. But the first one I want you to look into is that in this case, line, uh, I'm making like uh, taking my vertices and edges. I'm not using code in this case. I'm not using my scripted uh, node yet. Uh, this is just to preview it. But here I'm uh, first and last. I think I'm I'm going in into the uh, first item. So this is just a way to nest inside, go one level inside. Then I'm joining that uh, that data, and then I'm taking out those vectors. And then for each of these vectors, what I'm doing in this virtual is I'm using the string tools to create, uh, this is converting the numbers to strings, right? So that's the first step. I need to convert the numbers to strings. So, and then I start adding those together. So I can, I'm joining my G1. So it starts with here. G1 is a, the code for uh, linear movement. So G1, and then I'm putting uh, F8000. Uh, I wanna join that with, uh, my converted number from my list, x, and and then I join it here, right? So here I'm adding the value, yeah, the value x plus the number, yeah. So I'm just stringing them together. So I just keep adding little pieces of text together. 
So let's let's look at it because it's difficult to explain. <laughs> and that's the reason I don't like visual coding because it's messy. And then even I am having trouble reading this. Uh, I, I can understand what it does, but it's kind of complicated because what I'm doing is grabbing this G1 uh, F 1800 um, text, and then I'm joining it with this X, uh, whatever number is coming from that X, and then joining it to Y, whatever number is coming from my Y value. And it works in the end. I'm able to join them all together. And then I can dump this into a text file that is going to be saved uh, here. So I'm, I'm going to call that here G code. Let me, I'm, I'm going to call it something, uh, test one. Fail to find. I need to create a file here first. So I'm going to create a new file here. So where I'm going to call it dump, I'm going to call it dump. And then here I'm gonna select, select that dump file and dump it. And as you can see here, it's starting to create the G code for me, right? Now something is not going right because it's just giving me one line of G code. Um, I have been able to uh, do it before. So I'm doing something wrong here because right now it's just making the first line, but it should be giving me all the lines. It's possible, but I don't wanna debug it because that's not, the way that I suggest you doing your G code, I just want you to know it's possible. The second way is uh, to use our own parser. In this case, uh, we have this G code file. And sometimes this is gonna be necessary. For example, if you wanna do uh, robots or you wanna do uh, a different machine that takes a, a particular or a, a different type of G code or similar, then you have to understand how this is built. And usually the way this works is that you have, um, you have a command in this case, G1, and then you, you give it some parameters. So you can give it speed, right? At what speed is it gonna move to that point? And uh, how much material is gonna extrude in that line, right? So depending on the machine that you're using, depending on the uh, robot, whatever you're using, you need to find these um, different commands to write to them. So you can make your own parser. In this case, I made one for a simple G code, which takes G1. Then I think uh, F1800 is gonna be the speed. And then here I'm using this function in Python that uh, lets me format the text. So this X, is states, but then this X in, let me increase the size of this. This X states, but then what I'm doing is replacing the, the um, values in brackets with these values out here. So X, this X equals I zero, Y, this Y equals that, and I equals that. So what I'm doing right now is for this, is I'm just printing this to my console. I'm using print. So if I go here, window, total system, total system, it's printing my G code. And this one is working fine because it's doing a for loop for I in vertices. So for each vertice, it's looking at the position of each one of them and then creating a G1 code for it, right? So in this case, I have GF800, X0000. So it's gonna like home it to that position. And then it's gonna move, uh, to position X 2.5, Y. But this is just machine language. This is just for the machine to, to understand. And sometimes you need start G code and end G code depending on the machine you're using. So that's also you need to consider if you're gonna do your own parser, you need to think how the machine is gonna start and how the machine is gonna end. Because it has happened and it happened not too long ago that I just took a printed uh, part G code and put it in the robot and then because of the print, how the printer works, the robot is not accounting for, and it collision with the printed part itself. So um, I'll give you a little tour of the lab, so but at the end, <laughs> but, um, but that's just something to consider. How am I gonna start? Like, am I gonna start at a certain point? Then how am I gonna move to start doing my procedure? Printing, drawing, milling, same thing. You just need to think these things. If I'm gonna move, for example, when you're milling, if you're gonna go inside one, um, create a hole here, right? And we can do that, right? We create a line that goes in this direction, then a line that moves down, a line that comes up, a line that comes this way, a line that comes down. And you can do all this with Python, but what you need to consider is how how far up are you gonna go 
in order for it to move again. Because if not, what is going to happen if you're going to move that, move in, but then if you move it to the next point without going up before, it's going to make a line. It's going to mill that line. And maybe you were trying just to make holes into the uh, object. So just be careful if you make your own parser. Uh, just do it if you know what you're doing. <laughs> now, the third way it's using, uh, I really like it, is from uh, Alessandro Somparelli. Uh, this one is installed by default on Threadshot, the node. So what we do is we have a list of points, which is what we've been creating so far. Then we're measuring that list with this list length. All these ones, you just create shift A and you can find them. You can search and type list length and there it is, right? So if you have issues, just shift A, search and you can find these nodes. Um, in this case, I'm going to level one. And what I'm doing only here is I'm turning the size of that list. So if the list has five or 10 items, I'm turning that into a, a value that then I'm fitting to my layer height, right? So I, I, I need this one constant list is creating, based on that value that I fit, I created, first I measured that list. So it's giving me that uh, integer value. And then based on that number, I'm creating a list of values, right? So I'm creating a list of values 0.1 and 1. And this, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, it's, it doesn't default. Um, it expects you to say, to tell it how much. But what this is doing is, it's like um, multiplying the extrusion factor to, to the um, layer height and the flow multiplier. So, if you have a thicker, uh, a higher layer on 3D printing, you want to extrude more. So here is where you can type what's your layer height. In this case, we have 0.1, but you can type whatever. You can even say one millimeter or whatever, no? depending on what scale you're printing in. And then uh, also the 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 one for the flow multiplier. So you can you can actually play with that where you have the same height, but you want to extrude longer and less to make thicker or or thinner your lines and play with that to texturize, for example, your um, your part. But anyways, these numbers need to match uh, our lines. So if I unplug this one, it, it gives me an error. So hopefully that's something that, that could change because by default, I think it should uh, it should just take the numbers and just create a, a, a G-code without a flow, just in case we're trying to move for drawing or for whatever other reason. But the good thing is open source, so Either I or anyone could contribute to it. But uh, anyways, what we do is we connect our points. Sorry, we connect our points to this node here. And then uh, we have some retraction. In this case, if we want to create retraction, we can activate it. And this is when it moves from one travel, uh, when it does a travel uh, movement, it's going to pull back the material a little bit so we don't have stringing. Um, we also have a filament a nozzle size, which calculates the flow in this case. Sometimes we don't need it. So we can ignore that value if we're not using it for 3D printing. And then the speed, this is very important because this usually matters a lot and is uh, what speed the, the machine is gonna move to create all these movements. We can also create, like we have been doing here in our text editor, new files for creating our start and ng code. If you don't put one, it's just going to put the code of those points. So again, you can sometimes find this start and end G-codes on, um, on your printer's uh, uh, setup file. If you go to Cura or to whatever slicer you're using uh, in the settings, you can actually copy and paste those. Uh, maybe I can show you that. Let me check. No, I cannot show you that because we don't have time, but you can copy them. If you have questions about it, let me know. But anyways, once we create uh, uh, type export G code, we can give it here a, a location. So in this case, I'm gonna put it in the same place and I'm gonna replace this G code, uh, G code dot G code file. So every time I export, it's gonna export those lines into there. And the way I can see and verify this, I'm gonna open a new folder, go to that folder that I was right now, which is in my documents, GitHub, Files. So it's here. So it's saving it here. In my case, this is the, the folder that I'm saving it. So if I open my G code, then I see my, my file. 
So sorry, I was opening another software, but here we can see that our file got converted to it. By default, it gave me G92, which I think G92, it's a type of G code. I can remember if it does, uh, if it's for setting metric values or if it's for setting, um, um, anyways, um, there's a list of G code commands. I found this, but here you can see what they do, right? I, I can send a link like this later. In this case, I found this on thomasnet.com. But uh, it explains G01 is a linear interpolation. You have different types of movement. This is important. You can make circles. You can make uh, uh, different types of movement. Just verify that this uh, is compatible with your uh, printer or machine that you're using. Um, also, we have uh, G20 and G21 are for setting metric or imperial units. In this case, it was none of that. We have a G92. So if we go to G92 here, it's giving me a tool posi position register. Okay. So it's just it's just uh it's just making an absolute in that point, I think, that position that the printer is at at that point. And maybe that's just so it doesn't think it's somewhere else a printer. So it 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 thinks it's home. So every move from there might start being just uh, absolute from there. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> uh, let's keep going to back to here. I'm gonna go back to my uh, my new file, file new general file. Don't save. I'm gonna set this up real fast again because I didn't save it last time. So, okay, so you need to do this again. Spreadshot, new spreadshot. I want a text editor up here. So let me go back to it. Text editor, new file, my script. Now, I usually save it as my script.py, but I think the extension py is not needed, but it's good practice, just so you know. Oh, she there. Script, and scripted no like. So now I'm gonna grab my next code so we can keep moving forward before we run out of time. I'm gonna actually open it from the code, GitHub. So we left in French attractor nested loops. This is gonna be important. <laughs> I'm gonna copy this. Um, refresh it, update node, connect, 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 connect script, connect, and visualize. So now we're gonna start doing something like a surface. All right, so first let's just look at uh, oh. All right, I see what's happening. Uh, well, we have this piece of code here that I gave you, same thing, import math, we're creating a surface um, function that is gonna create surfaces for us. Then I'm making uh, a for loop like we have, but in this case, I'm, I'm looping this. And um, let me change my C right now. I'm gonna just type, uh, I'm gonna comment this out. So to comment in Python, you use the uh, hashtag or the pound, C equals. And this is so I can get a flat surface. So I have two for loops and then in between them, I'm creating a temporary list. This is important. I'll show you in a minute why. And uh, and um, then I am just uh, saying IB and IU are gonna change. Oh, this is gonna be interesting to explain. Um, let me do let me do this. So I'm gonna. So what we're doing, and I'm gonna draw for it. Sorry, I'm an architect, so I draw for everything. Oh, okay. Again. Oh, this is what I mean with Blender, that sometimes it does that and it's a little bit annoying, but. All right, we're back. So here's our grid that we created. 
And what we're doing now, we've been dealing with lists. I'm creating a list of lists, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So this is gonna be my first list, right? I think, and then this one, and then this one. And what this means is that I have a list of vertices, right? And then this is gonna be my one, two, and three. So to do this kind of uh, two-dimensional array, well, what we're doing is two for loops. So the first time it runs, the first the the inner inner if statement. Let me open that again so I can show it to you. All right. So here we are. So my first uh, my first for loop is creating first these lines that are gonna get displaced on uh, IU and IU is gonna change. Uh, I think it's X. But uh, first we're gonna we're gonna start um, displacing. So uh, all right, I, I just need to run this like um, like if I was a computer, I guess. So for IU in range U. So the first time X IV Y IU. So I use actually Y. C zero, we make a point. We store that point in our uh, on our temporal on our nested list and on our general list. Now it runs back again. It loops back to the end once it's done until it runs for every point that we want. In this case, we have one, two, three, four points. So the first time, if you think about it, the IB value is going to stay constant. So X is going to be constant, right? So actually, my lists right now are these way not that way so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna make a little trick i do to change the uh direction i think this so now it should concede so the first time it runs it's gonna create this position here with x that it's iv comma iu comma zero right and then it creates the next point, which is the same, but I, I u should be uh, one. And then the next time I u is gonna be three. And then the next time I u is gonna be four. And then it finishes it this inner loop here. And then it jumps back to the top, right? For I u in range. So then it, it moved my I u value up. So it moved my I u value up and then it starts uh, running each point again. Then it finishes, it repeats this again four times, and then it jumps back to the top of my for loop and creates a second line and the second line. That was a horrible way to explain this, but anyways, I'm gonna move forward and maybe it's gonna be more obvious once I'm uh, once I'm doing it and you see what it's creating. So let me get back my let me get back my node editor here. So as we see the bird groups, instead of the viewer draw, I'm gonna use a polyline viewer. Polyline viewer and connect my vertices. So I think this first list, what is spinning out is this list of lists. I'm gonna put the endpoint. So what it's giving us is actually uh, four objects inside our list. Each one has its own set of edges and each one has its own uh, set of points. And here is the snippet to create the edges. It changed a little bit from last time because right now we are counting the length of our uh, line E that we created. So we're creating this list to store the value of the number of vertices we, are, we have here. And then we're running that to create our vertices. Um, now, if we want one long one, one long uh, uh, one long line, we can come here, vertex group. We need to flatten this again. So I'm gonna grab it, not not flatten, uh, grab this again. And then what we get is because it's a polyline, it's doing this. No, sorry, because it's a nerves, it's doing these curves. Want to change this to poly? But now it's one object that gets done. So it's very different when you're doing this, if you want these kind of layers when you're 3D printing, 
it's really useful to think of, about these as a as a collection of curves that are or or polylines that are each one of set it every time that we're going to be building upwards, right? Or it can be a just one line. Both work, but sometimes it's easier to 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 think about this. How do you want a very big one long line, or is it a set of uh, lines that we're doing? Um, ooh, eleven thirty-five. I need to wrap up. <laughs> um, Anyways, I just wanted to show you this difference on how it's in this code, how you are uh, have this list of items or having one big item. And you can have both out on the same node. It can be very useful sometimes. So let me go to the next code so we can actually start and finish the important thing and what most of us are here, which is designing G code. And so we were done with that. That's the loops. All right. So we're gonna start with a simple cylinder. I'm gonna grab my cylinder code from my GitHub. And let's see how we create a, a cylinder. There we are. So let's look really fast what this is. Um, this is a more complex code that I made. Uh, it has a lot of uh, customized thing. And I took a lot of these and rewrote it from a tutorial that Joseph Coma did, I think also maybe for Digital Futures a while back. It's in his Facebook. So I, I, I took a lot of what he did on that tutorial and use, reused that of that in this code. I just changed it to Blender specific. So he was using, I think, Rhino Python. But uh, anyways, we have our, our inputs. In this case, we have our uh, our B, which is kind of a resolution in B, and R in U, which is a resolution in U. So usually when you have meshes, you have UVs, right? You have probably heard this concept. So in here, we're actually using UVs to be able to, to create these uh, surfaces. And uh, these two are gonna help us define the, the, the resolution that we want for each. The lower the number, the higher the resolution, and the more points we're gonna get. The higher the number, the less resolution we're gonna get. So RB and RU do that. Then we have SU and NU, which is the start U and then U. So here we can control where we start our U. In this case, our U, as you can see, um, our start U, as you can see, it's the, the first layer and count it and, and then up. So we can start at zero. And then NB is kind of uh, where we're ending that value, right? So oh, this is just, so yeah, as you, oh, sorry, this is as you, sorry, we were looking at the B. So start U and end U. So we can kind of cut our, we can kind of cut our geometry there. Now, uh, we have our output. In this case, I like to have these two outputs. We have, well, we have the edges um, that we will need, for example, for the viewer draw, if we wanna preview that. Visualize viewer draw. Uh, if I hide this for a second, you can see there it is, right? And the reason it's connecting this last one to the middle one is because if you look into my loop here um, to create the edges, I, I'm creating an extra one, um, I think. So I think I actually need to uh, delete one of these. I think I left this for a reason. I'm gonna just delete it. Hopefully it doesn't break my code. Okay, it did kind of delete. I'm still doing it for some reason. Um, I'm just gonna leave it because I think I debugged something and I left it there for a reason. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. But anyways, you can tweak this and change the way that you're doing your edges. But here, uh,
uh, okay i'll uh, i think we lost the connection with uh, louise so maybe we'll just wait a sec and it should be back hmm? but maybe in the meanwhile if you guys have any questions or something please uh, post it in the chat and i'll check in Yeah, uh, sorry, like I don't know what yeah. happened. I lost internet for a second yeah. here. I have no problem. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, no problem. I think that's okay. So, um, um where did I left? <laughs> I think you were you were just showing the tweaking of the code. It wasn't more than long, uh, I think. Yeah, right. I yeah, think we were okay. here, right? So, yeah. anyways, uh, forty minutes. Um, it was, I think, uh, uh, Louis, I think uh, maybe you can turn off your video uh, because it's again breaking the connection. And let's continue with this audio. My video? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Uh, let's, let's work with that so we can check if it's breaking the connection or something. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay. uh, so, well, here is all the logic for that. I try to do a really good uh, job of commenting what each line is doing. Uh, and again, what we want to worry about from now on is this X, Y, C, because this is going to be changing to, to tell us uh, where our X, Y, C values are going to be going. Again, I have two uh, outputs here. I have the, the polyline in this case and the poly edges. So what's happening? Why is it not looking? Let me connect it to the actual polyline instead. No, it should actually be working here. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's not reading it. All right, so, so I'm going to connect it because something's blocked right now there, but um, it might be my call. But what I want to show real quick here is that we can have a big polyline right that connects or we can have our layers this way right so what what our task is at this point is to start thinking how are we going to generate geometry based on the xyz value right so we're creating our edges our connections and we're creating our our points but um now we need to start testing different geometries to be able to to, to, to test. I'm gonna go back to the, the codes. In this case, I did a little change on the code so that we can spiralize our, our tool path. And wait, is the code? Hmm. This is not right. No, this is not right. This is for a surface. So okay, it goes back. 
So before I copy this one, the geometry from math, let me go back here real quick. Um, let, me, let me add the spiralize, which is not there is wrong. So the spiralize is not correct. Sorry about that. I'm just uh, getting that piece of code so I can uh, have it for you. Yeah, sure. No problem. It's here. So you also have this, uh, this, uh, I did this tutorial like in, in a text format. It's a little more, a little faster, but it's also there. And um, there's some extra information if you're interested. Um, but anyways, what I'm gonna do from this one, again, I explain a little bit again, what each thing is, if you're interested about everything. And what I'm looking here is where here is the spiral lines. This is the piece of code that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Is a C value. So let me go back to my code. And again, I'm just going to replace the C value because all I'm doing is changing my spiral lines. No, it's incomplete. What I copied. Okay, I see the issue. It's not indented right in this document. But... Again, in Python, it's very important the indentation because if you get the indentation wrong, you're going to get errors in your code. And the indentation is these spaces, and you have to, to, to follow the, the Python uh, thing, the Python uh, request for that. So, what this code is doing is that the first step. If step B is zero, so if it's our first uh, our first line on the bottom, then um, C equals B times step size divided by two, which is the layer height that I defined for this one. But as you can see, it's flat. It's perfectly flat, the first one. This first one is flat, but then after that, uh, I'm spiralizing it, which is really good at uh, 3D printing. Right now, uh, depending on the machine and the extrusion that you're using, of course, you need to take care of uh, what's this layer height between here and here, right? Because right now it seems like too high, and uh, and what's gonna be the the um, the flow and, and extrusion rate that you need in in the G-code export tool. Um, so yeah, this is how you spiralize it. And all we're doing is dividing this the layer height into little steps based on the number of points that we have so that each point uh, uh, moves up incrementally every layer. Now to the cool shapes. And again, this method of the cool shapes is based on the book uh, by Joseph Coma. So actually I'm gonna take this from the GitHub because I think that one, that one was right. So in this case, is this formula that creates this shape. Uh, it's spiralized, as you can see. That's why we use this UV uh, formatting. If we turn this to cyclic, we can close those loops that you see there. But now what we can do is to start changing our values for X, Y, and C in order to create different, uh, different shapes and different, uh, different uh, geometries. And um, for that, that's a little bit outside the scope, but... Um, because that's more like the, the the design of the geometry. I highly suggest looking at uh, a Dr. Joseph Coma book and I can run some examples here. 
let me open my this one this file has a bunch of examples. I'll try to upload a file with cleanup examples so you can see. So in this case, uh, same thing. I'm using this, this code that you see here on the side. And I'm using it for creating this uh, object, which has been 3D printed here. Um, and again, uh, this is the X equals uh, this, <laughs> which is a, a com it's composed of multiple uh, trigonometric functions that kind of displace our um, points uh, in every iteration we're making, right? So it's taking the step B value and the step U, and uh, then using those, we calculate U and B, and then we use that U and B to calculate our functions, uh, our Positions in these functions. Sorry. Let me make it longer. Again, uh, in this case, the way I'm previewing it, and this is really useful if you want to do uh, surfaces in Blender, is um, I'm creating a U and B component so that I can then use this line split, uh, lines, line split um, uh, tool. And what it's doing, it's only taking my vertices and feeding them to do this UV connection in a way that now uh, it's splitting it by size. So every 158 is creating a new list. So it's splitting a big list into a smaller list, each one composed 158. But that already did remember that we were doing this uh, U and B separately. So we can actually take this value, I think, and connect it here. And it should work. There you go. Work, maybe. Kind of frozen. Maybe it didn't work. I think that's why I use the uh, UV connection instead of using mine, because as we're dealing with more points, it starts uh, freezing sometimes. So I, I think that's why I left it with this list split. But what we're doing is in that one is that if you want uh, every 10 points to create a new, a new set of, of points, then you can do that. And that's how you can uh, layerize something or, for example, use different values for extrusion or different values for speed and for each one of these set of, of, of lists. Uh, Louis, while uh, you're waiting for this to uh, uh, circle back uh, in, maybe we could uh, check on some questions which um, which we had when you got logged out. Uh, Sienna is getting an error, no data entered in the vertices, vertices socket. Uh, so do you have, I can, I, I'll i just uh, post the questions again for you in the chat. Oh, she got that fixed, she said. Ah, okay, okay, perfect. And uh, Keshav actually was wondering if uh, you can show a little bit on how the how you did the animation. I uh, anything specific, Keshav? Maybe you can unmute and ask. But um... yeah, uh, so yeah, the animation. You mean the animation for the uh, the strange attractor? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I think. So for this one, will be a little bit more difficult because we're not dealing with numbers. Uh, we could actually uh, do it like that in the code, but for the strange attractor, what I did is I used the uh, the time frame in Blender, the the, the timeline. So, oh. I use the timeline as a value, as a number to to be able to change the number of items in the list. So as the timeline goes, the number of items increases, and the um, the yeah, as, as the time increases, then the, so the 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 number of items so it looks like it's wrong. So this is the timeline. So as I move this timeline on the other one, in this one is not matched, but in the other one, as I move the timeline, then it was uh, creating geometry. Now, for some reason, this is not moving. Did it close again? All right, I don't know what's happening with my computer. 
actually very slow. So, there it is. so I'm just gonna change this because I think that's what's hanging it. Is there any uh, more questions? Because I think we ran out of time. Uh, on the meantime, let me. Yeah, no problem. We we uh, we don't have any questions, but if of course you want to show anything else, we can extend a little bit by fifteen minutes more if you want some time with students and you want to show them any more script. Yeah, there's a, there's another one, and um, I think it, this one is interesting because um, let me. So, yeah, on this one, uh, I'll share this file too later, but uh, something interesting to know is that we can actually, uh, again, we're using the viewer draw and we're creating this UV coordinate system, but we can even like uh, flip it and, and, you know, do different things with this to play with the way that we're uh, uh, printing our geometry. Um, Another cool thing here in, in Threadshot is that you can also export things as an SVG document. Uh, we didn't have time enough to, to look into this, but just so you know, you can export these vectors out of uh, Blender and then use them for laser cutting or other things. Um, I'm gonna open a new one because this is kind of freezing for some reason. It wasn't happening yesterday when I checked. Um, then script super no way. Sport. Hopefully everyone knows what we're doing. So an example is that uh of, of what we were doing before um is that now we can start combining. We can start let me select like my text again. Visualizer. All right. So something important is we can start combining these techniques. For example, in this case, it's just a very simple G code that it's printing a cup, but we can start defining like this um, radial difference. In this case, for example, we use a, a KUKA robot in the lab. So usually you want to have two, two millimeters between each one of these. So you can start adding these parameters on, on, on your code in a way that then you can have these parametric um, objects where, that you can start using for playing. Um, well, I'm viewer, so it looks cooler. And this one is not spiralized. Oh yeah, it's spiralized, but there's a little uh, gap in there because it's spiralized, but it's connecting, uh, it's cyclic, so it's connecting the, the same one, <laughs> but it, it's fine, the, the code will work. Uh, anyways, uh, what I wanted to show you is that you can start uh, changing, for example, the, the, the diameter of these, but then you can actually uh, make it, oh, Solar. In this case, we don't want to cut it short. We actually want to do this, and then maybe we want to. Uh, so you can make this taller, and you can start uh, printing. And this is part of what I did. If you go to Instagram, this is what I use to print these objects. So I made this, this set of, uh, of objects. And, and the way this is done is just by, uh, this one is exactly what I'm showing you right now. This is exact same thing. And this one, the only thing that I added on some of these is added that texturing effect on the X, Y, where you find different formulas to start uh, adding a little bit of, a, a, a little bit of, a, a, yeah, like a displacement on each one of these lines. Um, also, an, an interesting thing is you can use these uh, Python flow tools. In this case, I'm using it to define where the base starts and ends and where our uh, walls start and end. So here, if you look at uh, if step B is 
on under the base loops that I want. So here, how many loops do I want here? So if the number is less than that, then you are base, but else you are part of the wall here. So I think this this kind of uh, kind of smart uh, toolpath thing it's interesting because then you can start adding more of these where you can add features into the object by using if else statements and comparisons like we did in the initial uh, in in the initial uh, parts where we were uh, displacing using the modulo. Uh, you can start having these really, really interesting effects. This is just like a introduction. So the goal here was just to show you the uh, how do you start creating these toolpaths? We're do, doing very simple toolpaths, but you can do very, very complex toolpaths too. And uh, hopefully this doesn't hang uh, again. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna give it another shot to this one because it keeps freezing it. Now I have one that has so many, many objects. Let me open it. So I can just show you a couple of files and the formulas that I use. Again, also here I added a little bit of a backdrop. The lighting helps. Um, you can start using Blender to preview all these things. Um, I don't know, I'm having this issue right now that everything seems to slow down. This is another of the bases that I made. Yeah, it's it's super slow. I'm gonna try something. Uh, I'm gonna try opening a previous version of Blender that I think works better. All right, it's not that bad. So again, all, all this is is a toolpath that then I can export. And there's another way to export this uh, that I didn't show you. Let me go back to that one. Uh, let's say I want to export this, this base. So one way that I can export it, uh, and the reason we in, imported the uh, GCO tools from Alessandro Zambarelli is that we can grab this, this object. In this case, it can be any polyline, any, any set of, of edges uh, in Blender. We can go here to GCO. And by selecting it and setting up a folder to save it, we can also, uh, oh my God, it just keeps freezing. Uh, name this gcode2, accept, export gcode. And then we can export this gcode into, into our, um, we can save this gcode into our printer. Another really cool thing that we can look into today before we leave, I'm gonna extend like 10 minutes only, but I think it's worth it. Now that you have these paths, you can actually take them, for example, in a tool like uh, KUKA PRC, and then you can actually take this G code and put it into a software that works with a robot. So this is very useful if you are using, uh, fine. so let's try that. Rhino, open recent. Uh, let, me, let me find the file, sorry. No, it's actually, oh, I remember it's actually in documents. I'm going to show you real quick how to import these toolpaths into uh, KUKA PRC so you can play that with the robot too. So I'm just trying to find my files. All right, so we have a GitHub also at the RDF lab where you can go to uh, KUKA KR10. We have a set of for that templates. And then here we have one that is for, template. okay, it's this one. So I'm gonna open this one and then I'm gonna open the Grasshopper file too.
I think my computer is being extra slow today, so I'm going to close it. Template. All right. So you can export. There's a tool also from Alessandro Somparelli called uh, Mesh Sync. You can download it for free. So you can send those lines and vertices. It creates a text file that you can bring into Grasshopper. And also you can uh, just save the G code and Kuka PRC has a, a G code import uh, component. Yeah, it's my computer. Sorry about that guys. I don't know what's happening that it's, everything seems to be hanging today. All right, it opened. So in this case, we can go for example to, uh, Kuka PRC, Grasshopper, we can simulate our tool here with the robot. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that G code that we made uh, a minute ago. So to import a, a G code here in Kuka PRC, we have to need, we need the file, G code import. So select one ex existing file. If I remember correctly, the file we made, the little square that we did at the beginning, I'm gonna go to Python Tupa thing, then files, I'm gonna grab that G code that I made, open. Um, did it work? Okay, so there's something missing here. I need to set a point. Mm -hmm. um, that should work. Anyways, as you can see, that's our little tiny line that we did before. So what I'm gonna do real fast is gonna change that with a little more complex G code in Blender. Hold on. Go here. Please be faster this time. I'm gonna go back to this one um, uh, using this one here. What, I, what I'm gonna do here, instead of this simple line, what I'm gonna do is let's grab a little more complex generator or one of the files that we've been working today with. Maybe actually, let me get the... Um... Let me get the... All right, I I'm just gonna grab something from here because if not, it's gonna take forever again and we need to grab this up. So I'm gonna get a circle here, connect it to my list in here and connect the, hold on, a secure uh, generator. Many vertices, vertices, radius, uh, because I'm working in millimeters with Kuka PRC here, I'm gonna put, um, I don't know, a thousand. So it's super obvious. That should be a meter. Uh, export G code here, G code there, export G code. Then I'm gonna go back to my grasshopper file, grab my new file, select one file, import my new G code, which I think is this one. And now if everything worked correctly, you can see the robot is trying to do that huge circle around it. And of course it can reach. So the thing about Kuka PRC is that it simulates for you and it shows you, hey, this is not right. So we can see that the robot can reach. <laughs> is doing something super crazy. But uh, we can change that by grabbing our, grabbing our circle. I'm gonna make it smaller, 50. And then just because, no, actually 100. And just because I know where, where the circle is uh, set here, I know where, where this should go. I actually need to move it on the XY 
you know, just try to make things simpler. <laughs> Shift A. I'm going to cheat a little bit. So I'm going to grab a mesh circle there. I'm going to make this bigger. Again, this is the, the base of my robot. So all I'm doing is setting my, my shape to be a little bit offset it here. Then Shift E. I'm going to select my new newly created newly created uh, loops. And what I'm going to do with the G code export add on is export it again, go back into here, set my file. And the G code. And now, what I, the reason I'm doing this is just to show you that, uh, in this case, the, the workflow that I use to send it to a machine. But if you have a 3D printer, all you need to do is, is send it to the printer and it should, should be working, right? So there you go. We can see the robot making that little circle that we did. And then what, what I think is really useful is that you can start uh, playing with the way that you're making these uh, lines, these toolpaths and then just export it to different uh, machines. In this case, we're exporting it to a robot, but of course that's that can be a 3D printer or that can be uh, whatever you need. And I think I'll wrap up. If you have questions, which probably there are gonna be a lot once you try to do this, uh, let me know and I'm very happy to help. And hopefully uh, this was very useful. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it was, I. Um... Thank you so much, uh, uh, Louis. I don't know if you have any other uh, uh, scripts, any other code or links that you want to post in the chat and uh, I can maybe write it down for the YouTube audience as well. So, um, yes. Uh, so one one link, uh, it's well in Instagram, uh, I post some things. Uh, and then another another one is my YouTube channel where I started actually these tutorials a while back. Let me, uh, and I think I, I do, a, uh, it's a little more explained, but you can see that some of the things that we did today are there more in depth. So, so, um, I have this list of computational design somewhere that you should be able to see. And here I have a part of what we did today. It's explained more in depth here. So today we were kind of restrained to these two hours, but some of the uh, subjects that we discuss are like explained in depth. Each, each tutorial is about like 30 minutes. So every one of the files that we did today, you can actually, uh, it's one of these tutorials, <laughs> but they are more, they're longer and a lot more explained, which uh, can be useful if there's a specific thing they're interested. And right now, one of the ones that is coming is on creating these complicated, sh uh, more complicated shapes, I think. Uh -huh. I think you maybe, uh, Louis, it will be good if you can just leave this link in the chat uh, for yes. the Zoom audience and I'll post it for the YouTube one. And uh, I was wondering if you also have suggestions for tutorials on basics of blenders or introduction to blenders from from some uh, some uh, YouTube links that you follow or any other tutorials that you follow. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. I can do that. And uh... yeah. for yeah. anyone who's starting new with Blender, maybe it'll be helpful for them to uh, know a little bit of what are good tutorials to follow online. Uh, there's a whole bunch of material available these days. So yeah, yeah. so I read so Blender itself, the Blender Foundation has really good ones. Uh, Blender. Sorry, no. I think it's free. If you go to Blender Cloud, uh, they have a training. Uh, I think they have an introductory one that is free or in the YouTube channel of, of Blender itself. I think they have a free uh, uh, Blender one. 
maybe it's on their YouTube. Uh, I haven't seen Blender tutorials, introductory Blender tutorials in a long time. So I, I know uh, CG Cookie has really good ones. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, Blender Guru has uh, a very uh, uh, famous one that, that teach you how to make a donut. So those are really good places to get started. I think the, the official Blender uh, introduction tutorials also the uh, CG cookie tutorials and the Blender Guru tutorials are really good uh, for parametric. Uh, right now in Blender, there's like geometry nodes that you can do a lot of things and you can link uh, geometry nodes to what we did today. So if you're, you can actually use a, a mixed workflow, which I've been testing lately. Uh -huh. Okay, I think that's, that's helpful. So I'm going to just quickly uh, start uh, sharing my screen to just again do a round of uh, announcements for the upcoming events. But in the meanwhile, if anyone has any questions, please uh, you post it in the chat and we, we are ready to wrap up then. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Louis. Uh, this was really helpful. Thank you so much for spending time with students. Um, just a reminder, uh, submissions are due 1st of October for AI Young Calls on Dali, Mid Journey, and Dream Studio. So if you're amongst those who have been exploring Mid Journey, Dali, and Dream Studio as platforms and have produced some interesting results which you would like to share with the, the larger audience, please uh, make the submission. The links are available in the YouTube chat for you to uh, look at. Also, tomorrow we have on 2nd October uh, at the same time, 10 a.m. Uh, EDT, we have a second session on AI Spring Series, which is part of FIU DDES program along with Digital Futures. And uh, all those who are PhD students or just enthusiastic about uh, AI, please join us for this session. You can join in through YouTube or uh, you can just fill up the form. And next week, uh, we have another tutorial uh, with uh, Diego Garcia Calves. Uh, he is also the author of the book, um, G-Code 3D Printing and Advanced 3D Printing for, uh, with Grasshopper. So a lot more of learning from the Rhino and Grasshopper uh, interface with 3D printing will be taken care of. All our tutorials, including this one today, is available on Digital Futures Tutorial uh, playlist on our YouTube channel. Uh, do check out other, other tutorials, even in regional languages in uh, Spanish and Farsi and along with talks are also available. And yes, this brings us to the end. I am not sure if there are any more questions, but looks like we're we are good. And I hope you all share your results with us on our Instagram. Looking forward to the next week and next set of tutorials. Uh, Louis, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Thank, thank you very much, Mavlin, and thank you everyone. And uh, hopefully it was very useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.